Before I was a teacher, I was a firefighter for the city of Alexandria, Virginia. You can imagine that fire safety was and is still important to me. Schools have fire protection systems that include sprinklers, alarms, and extinguishers. Teachers and administrators engage in fire safety training and have official procedures that everyone must follow. Now, most school fires occur during the day and half of the fires in schools are intentionally started. This is why it's important to make sure that you are well informed and have an understanding of fire drill safety. Now, this back to school night presentation is designed to talk about fire drill safety here at Dover High School and I'm going to focus on four main areas. How to recognize that there is a fire. Discuss what to do in case there is a fire in the building. Share steps that we take to make sure everyone is safe as they are exiting and returning to the building. And lastly, where to find help. Let's take a look at the first point, how to recognize a fire. Schools conduct fire drills on a regular basis, but what happens when there is a real fire in the building? The first thing that will happen is that the fire alarms will sound, and in some instances, announcement will be come over the PA system with instructions to evacuate the building. Now let's look at what we should do in case that there is a fire in the building. Teachers will instruct students to move rapidly to evacuate the building. Students should follow all directions on the evacuation maps posted in the classroom. The teacher will designate a student to hold the exit door. Each teacher will follow their class to the predetermined meeting location outside of the building. Students will remain outside with their teacher until an announcement is made to re-enter the building if the building is unsafe to re-enter, students will be transported to a safe area and parents will be alerted via the school's communication system. There may be some isolated fires in the building that need immediate attention, for example, in the chemistry lab or instructional kitchen. For students and teachers in these types of classrooms, here are some safety instructions. First, make sure that everyone knows the location of the fire extinguishers. The teacher will demonstrate the use of a fire extinguisher as well as other techniques for putting out minor fires in a science lab or instructional kitchen. If a fire does occur in the lab or kitchen, students should notify the instructor and move away from it carefully to avoid causing an accident. Students and teachers should also be familiar with all of the laboratory exits and evacuation plan. If there is a fire in a lab or instructional kitchen, the teacher should be the one to extinguish the fire. In case of a fire alarm, whether planned or unexpected, shut off any burners, hot plates, or running water you are using and leave the lab or instructional kitchen as quickly as possible in, or in an orderly manner. Your teacher will tell you beforehand which emergency exit to take out of the building. Once out of the building, walk clear of the exit so you will not hinder anyone else's exit. Once we have evacuated the building, how do we make sure our students are safe? Regardless of whether you are evacuating the building as a part of a scheduled fire drill or if there is an actual fire emergency, teachers are required to take their attendance books with them. Once students are assembled at the predetermined location, the teacher will take attendance. Once the building has been cleared for re-entry, students will return to their classroom and the teacher will take attendance again to ensure that all students have returned safely. If there were students who didn't follow their evacuation procedures, if something went wrong during the exit or re-entry to the building, the teacher would do a debriefing and review the fire safety procedures. In many instances, if there's a planned fire drill, someone from the school administration will be asked not to take part in the fire drill, but to observe. The reason this is important is because staff in the school have been assigned specific fire safety responsibilities, which vary depending on their role and whether they are a de designated responsible person. These duties are intended to guide students out of the building and to provide special attention to members of the student population who may need additional assistance. Finally, let's wrap this up by talking about how to find additional help. There may be some instances when students are not in the classroom during a fire drill or fire emergency. Students may be in the bathroom or coming back from related arts. What should they do in these instances? Students should evacuate the building through the nearest exit. Once the student is outside of the building, they should locate their predetermined meeting location. If the student does not remember the location, they should go to the nearest teacher and let them know that they cannot find their class. Once cleared from the re-entry, the teacher will provide a hall pass for the student to return to their classroom so that it can be documented that the student was safe during the drill. We will have several opportunities to practice our fire drill plan throughout the school year, and I hope this video has been helpful. 
Should you have any further questions, please see the fire safety link on my teacher webpage.